Howdy folks, it's Meandering Mike in the Man Cave of Madness. It's after midnight, and we are going to show you how to play Paolo Mori's Blitzkrieg World War II in 20 minutes or less. Now, uh, I'm going to try to make this explanation short. You could easily spend lots of time explaining how to this, depending on how detailed you want to get, how much strategy you want to teach. Uh, so you could spend an hour teaching the person the game. You could get started in five minutes. We're going to be somewhere in between. All right. Uh, a lot of the details of this game, the, the beyond the how to play, like how to play, I will show in my first playthrough video where I will go into detail. I'll play a long game. It'll definitely take more than 20 minutes because I will do my style of where I discuss all the options and you know, my thinking process and how to play. And then later after that, I'll do a playthrough where boom, 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 we'll see how fast it can go. And you'll witness a game that's played in 20 minutes or less. So let's get started with this simple explanation. I'll do an advanced explanation that's even simpler if you're an experienced tabletop board gamer. But right now, how do you play Palomori's Blitzkrieg? The first thing you do is let's talk about the components real quickly. Here's the board. There's five theaters of operation. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see that board a little better. Five areas. This is World War II, so we have an Eastern European theater, Western, Pacific Ocean, African Middle East, that's one, and Southeast Asia. So there's five theater of operations. Within each theater of operation, there's rows of spaces. These are called battle spaces. Each row is a campaign. There's three or two campaigns in each theater. The size of each campaign varies from two to five battle spaces. So each campaign is, each theater is slightly different. Each campaign can have from two to five. It's comprised of battle spaces. Blue, brown. That's sea, that's land, or all land, all sea, a mix of land and sea. These are markers. You start by putting the control markers in the middle of the battle track for each theater in the center, red space. See the red space? You put the red cube on the red space. That's easy. Up here is the war victory track. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. War victory track, okay? It goes all the way up to 30 points. The goal is 25 points. That's the main way you win the game, first to 25 wins. Whoever the Axis always goes first in this game. If they get there first, the Allies get one more turn, okay? So the Allies get there first, they'll win. The Axis gets there first. The Allies get some turn to catch up. And the Allies win ties, okay? There's another way to win, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, so what else do you got besides five theaters, two to three campaigns in each theater with two to five battle spaces in each campaign? We have units. Each player has 22 units. These tokens will go in a bag, All right? Here is... The German bag of the Allied player. Or Allied player. Axis player. All right. The force mix is the same for the two players. In this, in this basic game, basic map, there's an expansion. We're ignoring that for now. Each side has the same kind of units. So let's look at them real quick. The little tank symbols. Armies. Those boats. Ships. Navies. Airplanes, those are air forces. That is a general, okay? There's an admiral. You can tell the difference because the admiral wears black, has a white shirt with a tie. The general's wearing green or should be gray, feel gray in the case of the of the uh, axis over here. The allies, he's in green, okay? And there's a special air force down here hiding. He's got a special symbol and he only has a zero strength. Okay, so each unit... Armies, air forces, navies has a strength rating from one to three. Air forces from one to two. Well, a zero in this case, but a special ability. General, admiral, or one or more value. We'll talk about them later. All right, so that's the units that you have. How do you play? Well, each turn you play one unit from your reserve. What's the reserve? Well, like I said, you have a bag of units, and we're going to put those in there after... Uh, you start to play a little bit uh, in the explanation. You, you start with three guys. You take three guys out of your bag and you put them in your reserve. 
You normally put them. Here, let's see. Zoom back out. All right. Here we go. These screens. Your reserve of units are normally hidden. Each player has a screen. You put your three reserve behind it. We are playing. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide these. I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna remove these so the units won't be hidden. You'll you'll see them as we play. These screens do have useful information on them, so we'll keep one handy so we can refer to them. But we are gonna have the units exposed as we explain. So let's grab a couple units and assume that this is the axis reserve over here. And let's grab a couple of units over here and assume that that is the allied reserve. Okay. And we'll make some explanations as we go. All right. So on your turn, and the Germans go first. The Germans, the Allies, I should say, it's the, the mm. Axis. The Axis, composed of, historically, the Germans and the Japanese. In this game, you just see the German symbols. And we could interchange call them Germans or the Axis. The Allies comprise the British and the French. And the Americans, we see the Allied Roundel symbol on the planes. We see on the tanks an American white star. But on the back of the counters, the Allies have the British roundel and the Axis have a German iron cross. And you can see that here. Okay, This is why I suggest that they sit on the sides. The Allied player should sit here because on these battle tracks for each theater, this is a tug of war process, the Allies controls on this side, the axis controls on that side. So have the axis sit over here, the allied here, and you always pull the cube towards you when you make a move that gives you more control. It's very easy. Now, some people, if you play solitaire, you might sit here. <laughs> you could play two-player opposite, but it's easier to keep track if the allied sits here and the German sits here. Okay, I'm going to sit here because I can reach everything and I'm controlling it myself. So, your turn is, you take one unit, one unit from your reserve, you look out there at an empty square in a theater of your choice at the topmost open campaign. So we said there's these rows, each row is a campaign. In a theater, you can play into the top row, okay? Now you can play in any space within that campaign. It's not left to right, you can choose anywhere in there you want to, okay? And what happens is when you make your move, you look at the icon in the battle space and you apply that first, okay? So the axis are going to go first. Say they roll up here and go into Eastern Europe. They choose this square, for example, they would apply this result here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that better. And I'm not going to explain all these in details right away. But you, you look at the thing. This is tactical advantage. That gives you plus one on the tug of war track, the battle, the battle track in your favor. So remember... The Axis are on this side. The Allies are on this side. So since the German took this over, they will get one point in their favor. Once you've applied the battle space icon, you then take the strength of the unit you played and you add that to the track. So this is where the Germans would add up, end up. If, okay, and before, when, you, when you've played your one unit, grab a guy from your bag and put it in your reserve. So you always play one unit, at the end of your turn, you get one unit back. So there he drew a new Navy, all right? So it'd then be the Allies' turn. They can play in the same campaign in any open spot or any other one. 
They may say, huh, I want to try to, to, to counter his move. Let's, let's say he does that. Let's say he says, I'm going to take this tank and I'm going to play it here. You'd first do this result. You'd look at the icon. You can read on here, what does it do? Ah, that's a factory. That's industrial production that allows you to put a unit from the bag into your reserve. So let me look over here. He had had these two guys in reserve. You get one. But at the end of your turn, you always get one more out of the reserve. All right? So this is how, for example, the Allied player might end up that turn. His reserve has increased in size. He got a factory, an industrial production. During the turn, he got to draw one extra reserve and then his normal end of the turn. All right? That would be there. Now, once that was resolved, gotta go back here. This was placed here. You then resolve those two points. So this is the allied playing two. We drag it back to the middle, the middle, all right? So it had gone two in the favor of the Axis because he got one tactical advantage, a one strength unit. The allies responded with a two strength unit, grabbing it two back. This campaign is now closed. If a campaign closes, you, you look to see who is in the lead and they will score this number of victory points. If it's a tie like this, if it's been dragged back to the middle, they would both get two victory points. In this case, both guys would get two points. And it would now be the Germans' turn, the Allies' bleh, the Axis' turn. Sorry about that, folks. Tongue-tied, meandering tongue. Now, this campaign is closed. That means this, in this theater, is now the open campaign. You, you still have open campaigns in each other theater. So, for example... We might say, hey, now the Germans, the, <laughs> the Axis might decide to do something like, oh, I'm going to play a Navy here, for example. And they'd be the same kind of thing. Oh, tactical advantage. It gets one in his favor, one for the strength of Navy. He's trying to compensate. He's got these weak units. He's trying to, to get some tactical advantage. He gets a bonus. He gets two. Now, I'm not saying this is a good move. And in fact, none of these moves are necessarily optimal. We'll discuss strategy more later, but I'm giving you examples of what the different things do. Now, let's say the allies decide to respond to that. Okay. Let's say, now, this place has four total spaces in it. You got four spaces to be closed before the final resolution happens in this. So maybe they're going to play somewhere else. Uh, for example, the Allies might decide, okay, we have to always remember, at the end of that German player's turn, you always put one into your reserve. Okay. Now, let's say the Allies on their turn, they decide to not go into this theater, but to go into a different theater. They're wanting to bomb the Germans. Okay. This is a bombardment symbol. What does a bombardment symbol do? it causes the enemy to lose one of the reserve at random. Okay? So what we would do is you could flip these over and shuffle them around. Now, normally they'd be behind a screen. The guy could shift them around. He could say, I'll take the one on the left or the right or the middle. And you'd trust him to do it. Or you could, you know, turn them upside down like this and play a little shell game. And the guy could reach over and remove one. Or you could roll a die and you could say, I want one, two, three, four, five, six. And you could put them in a cup, whatever. Now, Normally, it's best not to expose these because at some point we're going to get these research guys in the game and you would know that he has a research dude. Now, you, you, you could remember that the guy had got one in his bag. We'll explain this in a minute, but you might not know that he actually has research in his reserve. And so the best way to do it is you, is you trust someone. <laughs> you either put them all in another cup and let the guy draw out or, you know, you know, behind here, you take one at random. But we're playing out in the open right now, so we would know. Um, but let's say they did one random, and up, oh, he lost this one. Boom, he got bombarded. This would go back in the bag, all right, of, of the Axis. And so we had the Allied had played here in his turn. You always got to remember, don't forget to move the points in your curl. You first resolve this space, 
But don't forget to move the points for the strength of the unit, okay? This is not closed yet. We're not closed, all right? The allies get to draw another uh, guy, okay? Remember, because they, they have four reserve right now because they had drawn an industry. The access is down to two, two. They're starting their turn with just two guys. Now, that means they have a little more limited choice of where they can play. Now, remember I mentioned there's another way how to win? That is, if you force the enemy so that he cannot play in his turn, he loses. So if you get bombarded again and again so that you have a zero reserve, when your turn starts, you lose. You cannot play because you have no units in reserve. There is no passing. There's no skipping your turn or anything like that. You must play. If you cannot, you lose. Now... Right now, he's got an air, he can play in any open space. But let's say, what if he only had two navies? And let's say on all the board, there's only pure brown squares open. So remember, there's pure, there's land, there's sea, and there's mixed land and sea. Navies can only go in blue or blue and brown. Armies can go in brown or blue and brown. And air forces... They can go in any of the spaces. If, if he only had navies and the only open space, now that's not the case, right? But in the hypothetical, if all the spaces on the board were brown land spaces, brown alone, he could lose. Even though he has two units in reserve, he doesn't have a legal play open, you can lose. So one way you, you win the game is to get to 25 first. You know, if you're the German... The Axis and the get the 25, the Allies will get one more turn, but normally it's the race to 25 points or make it so a guy can't play. And usually that's bombing them down to zero, but sometimes they might have, you know, one or two in the reserve, but they just don't have a space to play. All right, so I'm going to put that guy's unit back. <laughs> that was actually a, an Allied unit. Um, so this is the Germans' turn. They have to decide where to go, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plane... Here, it's two strength and now I'm gonna I'm gonna use the navy. They're gonna play here, they're desperate. They say, hey, I'm 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 weak here. I need more industry. I wanna get so they play this, they're gonna get a guy out of their uh for for the industry, they're gonna get a dude, and then they get their normal end of the turn. All right, so now they're back up to three. They've been bombarded once, but they got industry once. They're at net three. The allies have an industry once, the production bonus, and have not been bombarded, so they're at four. You should always let the other person know what is your legit reserve size. Everyone should remember that. You start with three. You might go up. You might go down. You should know, okay? You should know and, and keep track of it. Don't keep that as hidden knowledge. Normally, what units are in the reserve are hidden by the screen, but don't hide the fact, you know, you know, let them know how many you have, all right? So that was there. So now we, we can continue playing a little bit, but that's, uh, let's, 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 let's look at it. Now, right now, okay, we got to remember, like I said, they played here and they got to move it, one in their favor. Now, this is now on the uh, right for the pickings for the allies over here. Because they're they're already in control. Um, now I'm going to do something here. I'm going to show you this. This is a Blitz Air Force. That lightning bolt. That's what the name Blitzkrieg comes from. Lightning warfare. When you play a Blitz unit, okay, you still you still do what you normally do. So this symbol is research technology. You go to the cup. You grab one out. The rules don't say, but we always play, you'll get to look at it. You don't show the enemy, but you know, when you draw a card in a game, normally you get to look at it. Unless it says draw a card, keep it face down, don't look. They'll tell you that. If you normally draw something, you get to look. So you get to see, aha, I've got this four strength navy. So that's one of the tech guys. It's stronger than normal. Normally you only go up to three strength navy. This is a four strength navy. You put it in the bag. So this goes into the allies bag. 
they they don't get it right away. It's in their bag. Now, they 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 need to finish resolving what happened here. They did this effect, they put it in the bag. They move zero. This is a zero strength. There are in the technology thing, there are some one and two strength blitz. There's like a two strength blitz navy and a one strength blitz air force, I believe. Um, but this guy is one or zero strength, so you don't move it anymore. But he may now elect to do one more move from his reserve. Okay, he's getting a a double whammy. So he's going to play again. But before he does that, finish this campaign was closed. He is in the lead. He is controlling it. The allies will get two points. So they're now in the lead. All right. Now he's going to play another unit. Uh, he's going to play another Navy. He's, he's now down to going down to two in his reserve. He's played two units. You're, you're playing with the blitz extra units, but you're only drawing one at the end of your turn. So Blitzing is reducing your reserve. It's almost like bombing yourself. Not ready. You got to play an extra unit, but your reserve is shrinking. So you got to be careful about blitzing at the wrong time. If you only have one reserve left, you know, or you know, let's say you have two, you play one as a blitz army, and you play that your last dude. You're only going to grow one back. You're going to be down to only having one. You you might lose right if he bombs you, etc. So you got to watch out there. But that's why he's playing here on this. He's He's blitzing, playing an extra guy. He's going to get an extra guy from his thing and reach in and draw. And we're going to get, oh, he gets this guy, an admiral. What the hell is an admiral? Okay. This is a special unit. It's a variable strength. Okay. I wanted to mention something real quick about blitz. You must play the blitz in the same theater. Same theater. So, we finished this campaign. This Blitzing Army finished the campaign, but you can now play in this campaign. You could not play this Blitz unit and then play a unit up here or over here. You can only Blitz in the same theater, but it can, as in this case, be in the next campaign. Or you might, you know, if there's more open spaces, you could Blitz and get multiple plays in the same campaign or across campaigns in the same theater. Okay, so... He, he's, he's playing this here. That's what he played. He he drew the extra unit. He got the Admiral. The Admiral has a variable effect. When you play the Admiral, he counts as a Navy. But what he does is you take one plus all navies that you have already played in that theater. If you played this guy, he'd be one plus one for himself because he's a Navy, plus one, plus one, plus Air Forces. The Admiral gets navies and Air Forces, a general gets armies and air forces. Now, like this guy would be really strong playing in this theater. One, two, three, plus himself, four, five strength. But if he tried to play, say, up there in uh, Eastern Europe, there's only one army. There's no navies. There's no air forces for the allied. This guy would only be two points, one plus himself. So if he played in that blue-green space, he'd get only two strength out of it. All right, so that's how those work. But we we drew that guy out of the bag because of industry here, right? And then it is the uh, so we're not, we're not playing it yet, but we're talking about how strong it is, right? But then it's you draw from your bag again, and oh, this time he he got lucky and he drew his technology. It could be turns and turns and turns before you ever draw your technology, or you could get lucky to the same turn. But by all means, shuffle the bag. Take the bag and shuffle it up. Shuffle it up. You know, mix, draw it tight. Turn it upside down. Shake it around. Don't be the person that drops in the technology and then reaches in there and hopes to grab it right out the top. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. So that's the allied turn. So he had been at four. He played the unit, went down to three reserve. Blitzing, he went down to two reserve. But because he played on... Industry, he went back to three reserve, and he gets his normal end of the turn. So he stayed at four. So this is the interplay of, like, industry, bombing, blitzing. All these things can up and down, change the size of the reserve. Pay attention to that. Okay, there is the German's turn done. Oh, and by the way, we need to add the one point here. So he's up to three points here. All right, what is the poor 
German dude. Well, the German, German, allied, allied. I'll, I'll probably say that half the time. I'll, I'll misspeak it. All right. So he is, he is back up to three total reserve now because he got bombarded, but he did play his industry up in Western Europe. He's going to go back and, and do some stuff in, in Africa. Maybe he thinks, ah, I'm Rommel. I'm going to do some stuff. So let's say he goes here in this square. All right. Now let's zoom in and carefully look at that square. All right. That's a plus three. Now we looked at a plus one before that was tactical advantage. Well, this, notice the little arrows on the side. I think they should have had a little better icon. Yes, that's a, a plus number with two arrows on the side. See, here, here's, here's a plus two. That's tactical advantage. This is strategic advantage. They really needed like a, maybe a little globe symbol next to it or something. But those two little arrows say you get a plus, but strategic means not in the same theater. When you when you play on tactical advantage, you get bonus points in the theater. But you play strategic, you get three points elsewhere. So let's say he plays here. He says, I get three points elsewhere. He's going to say, well, darn it, I don't like you. I'm going to move you back three points here. I'm going to drag that back to the middle. I don't like your big advantage there. I'm going to reduce that. And then you finish two points. Two points. All right? So it's up to here. Now, very important. Very important. Very important. Very important. This is the most misplayed rule in the game. Okay? There are three ways to score victory points. We showed how when you close a campaign like we did up here, and like we did here, you you get two victory points. Now, this was a shared victory, so they each got two. This was a pure allied victory when it was over here, so they got the two. Let's that up a little bit. Another way to do it, we haven't talked about it yet, but it's a very easy square to resolve. Let me go out one. These symbols here in the battle spaces, those are called propaganda. Those are victory points you score immediately when you play there. It's just raw victory points right up to the track. You score them, can't lose them. Okay, so you can score them for winning a campaign. Someone closes it and you're in the lead, you get those points. It's taking over the battle spaces with your unit, you'll get those points. Now, these points here are not scored when the marker reaches them or passes them. No. Through, this rule is misplayed all the time, and there are dozens and dozens of videos out there that explain the rule wrong. These points are bonus points when a campaign closes. If you are in the lead, and you are winning this, and you have got to this point or beyond, you get this bonus. This is a bonus if you win. You do not get it for reaching here. This causes people all sorts of problems. They say, I got the point, but then they got yanked down. Do I lose the point? And it goes, do I get the point again? No, the rule does not state that. The rule, unfortunately, talks about when a campaign is closing and it happened to reach that exact square at that time. And they said, well, because you reached it, you get the bonus points. It's not because you reached it. It's because it was reached when this was our, when closed and you're there. If you're in this zone, you would get one bonus point. If you're up to here, you'd get two bonus points. So right now, he pulled it up to here, but this is not closed. He's in the lead, and if this gets closed, and it's here or farther, he will get the bonus points, but he doesn't right now. Just remember that. You'll be good. I'm hammering it in there hard, but that is absolutely the most misplayed rule in Blitzkrieg. All right, so the German went here. He applied strategic Advantage over here. He moved another two points up to here. It's not closed yet. There's two, still two spaces to go before you resolve this stuff. He gets to draw another one from his bag. He's still, you know, so he started at three reserve. He played one. He's getting one back. Reaching in. Come on, guy. What do we get? We get a ooh, three strength tank. All right. See it over there? All right. So it's back to the allies' turn. Now, this is going to go back and forth. We've covered almost everything. I mentioned uh, the victory point things. Now, if the if the uh, British, British, the Allies 
wanted to try to wrest control here, they could go for their big four strength tech guy. The thing is that would bring it back to here, but on the Germans turn, as long as they played at least a one strength unit, they would be in the lead when they closed it. So maybe the allies don't want to play here. They might want to say, well, let the Germans do it themselves. Play, make two plays. Let me try to maybe do something somewhere else. Or they say, oh, I can play my big admiral. Well, the admiral is only worth three points here. They've played, nope, they've played two points because the allies have played nothing here. So the, the admiral by himself in here, in a navy space, would be worth one plus himself. It's only two. Now that would rest the axis away from this bonus point marker, but they'd still be in the lead and they could finish off with any of their units over there and amply still win and get bonus points. So in this case, they wouldn't want to go here. Maybe they want to go somewhere else and score big, big points. So let's think about that. Let's say... They play their admiral over here, and he is one plus himself plus one, two, three. As we saw, navies and an air force, there's three other units plus himself, so he's worth five. Let's say he plays here on the strategic advantage. Now he's going to say, I'm going to yank this back too. I'm going to try to hurt the Germans, and maybe I can play my big old uh, aircraft carrier and yank it away from him next turn if he can't play something big. Because normally he wouldn't know that over there he has twos and threes. Maybe he only has ones. Maybe he only has ones. But he's going to hurt that a little bit. He's playing over here. He's going to get boom. Okay, we were actually uh, at... I got a <laughs> one, two, three. We were at three here. We'd, we'd moved in the Allied's favors. And this... Oh, no, but he, he yanked it back. That's right. He's strategic advantaged. That's why we're back at zero. We're in the middle. But he's now saying, I'm going to do, you know, I, I he did two back here strategically. And now he's yanking it five in his favor. One, two, three, four, five. We reached the one space. Remember, you don't score it right now. You do not score it right now. Remember, remember, remember. But he's done. Big advantage here now. Hurt that a little bit. He's trying to play the things off. And he gets to draw one more from his... Uh, cup and he gets a one strength army yeah there's his he's still at four okay so the germans the germans are saying i'm behind right now i want to win this thing i want to win it big i could get mm, stuff here. i can't close it in one turn i don't have a blitz army or something like that but I want to get the, make sure I get these points. You know, if I play here and he plays here, he could he could grab a point plus maybe pull me off, or or at least get up off the bonus point. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play here. I'm gonna play big. Okay, so I'm gonna score the one. So immediately he puts one point up on the track here for that propaganda symbol. Propaganda, immediate point. He moves it three, one, two, three. And again, we don't do anything with points here yet. We're not closed, but he's firmer in the lead now, firmer in the lead. And the allies now think, oh God, you know, if I play my carrier, one, two, three, four, ah, I can't even pull it back to the middle. It's like, oh no. You know, he was hoping that he could stop the access from taking that, knowing he had this big, strong dude. Now, the the Axis didn't know that, but he was just trying to get as big a lead as he could. But the Allies like, ha ha, I'm going to stop him. I'm going to do all this stuff and I'm going to grab it. And no, he fails. So we got to remember to give the German another nah, 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 nah. guy out of his bag. So he's back at three. And so we have covered all the different unit type, the square types, the battle types on the map. Explain those. Tactical advantage, strategic advantage. There's industry, there's research, there's propaganda, there's bombardment. Now, there's some special cases. What? Yes, there's special cases. If you look here, I'm going to zoom in. There's a gear symbol with two. That means, yes, two researches. If you get this square, you would put two research tokens in your bag. All right? There are... Double industry that is right here. 
you get this square, you get to put two guys from your bag into your reserve. This is two guys from research into your bag. This is two guys from your bag into your reserve. Your reserve grows really big. There's one more special dude. Look at that. Research and industry. What does that mean? It means you go in here, you grab one of these research guys, and you immediately put it in your reserve. Normally, research puts a guy in your bag. Industry gets more out of your bag. Well, this special dude, you get the research token you just drew, and you put it in your reserve instead of your bag. So those are the special ones that are just mm, the same effect. So there are actually two double researches, one here and one in Eastern Europe. There's a double research, and this is a research and industry. Okay, so those are valuable squares. They're they're later on in, you know, they're not good up front, but there's those really nice, juicy strategic advantages. There's some big strategic advantages. There's a lot of points, like Southeast Asia has a lot of propaganda points. Okay, so you get the idea of how to play. Those are all the different uh, battle square effects. Um, the, the timing of the choice of them is up to you. There's certain moves that people favor. I'm not I'm not revealing that yet. What uh, uh, oftentimes, you know, ex existing players are like, yeah, you, you did things wrong. You should have done something else. Uh, that strategy is debatable. We'll look at that. But we, we are not going to go into more detail right now on all these different units. As you can see, hey, there's a one strength tank with a blitz symbol. There's three strength air forces. We saw before we had a four strength navy. There's a four strength army. So there's special things like that. There's an atomic bomb. There's a scientist. There's a spy. Uh, there's there's uh, bombardment units, things like that in there. As we encounter those in a full playthrough, we'll, we'll do that. So we're at 37 minutes. <laughs> Again, this is not an hour-long explanation of how to play. It wasn't a five-minute either. The five-minute explanation would have just been... You have a bag of units. You start with three of them on the board. That's reserve. Each turn you play one of them out of your reserve onto the board. You have to play it in an empty square. You have to play it in any theater in the top row of each theater in an empty space. It can only be one per thing. Once you play it, you resolve the effect. You look at the chart to see what it does. Then you take your strength and you move it towards your side there. If a whole row is completed, you look to see who is the strongest. The guy that's on the strongest side towards them scores those points. Maybe bonus points if they've reached this at that time. You never score these in mid-game, only during the campaign closes. As the campaign closes, that opens the next one. There's a special rule here. We won't talk about that now. If you reach, well, we will. If you reach the end here, you can close all open campaigns and get all open benefits. And if you get the first to 25, you win, unless you're the, the uh, access. You got to give the allied one more turn. And the other way to win is if the other guy can't play, he loses. There. That is the quick and dirty how to play. Okay? <laughs> I could have done that. You probably wouldn't have retained that. We did a little more. Now, I'm going to quickly spend a couple more minutes saying here's another way to think about how to play. If you are an experienced tabletop gamer, you will hear about certain mechanisms and concepts. Okay? This game is a bag builder. You've heard of deck builders. Well, this is a bag builder. You start with a certain force in your bag and you add to it. You get these tech guys, and your bag gets stronger. You have a reserve. This is your gateway out of your bag onto the board. Well, these units that you're pulling out of your reserve and are placing here, that's worker placement. These tokens are workers. Each turn you place one worker on the board. You are limited where you can place them. Well, how are you limited? Well, it has to be in a square that's empty. It has to be on the top row of any given region. Now, I'm going to call these Something else, this is an area control game. Each campaign is a area made of battle spaces. And there are multiple areas in each sort of overall region. It's tug of war control. It's area control. So your worker placement has to go in an empty space, empty space in the currently contested area, the top campaign. You, you do the effect when you worker place. You place it in there. And on the tug of war board, this is how you influence control, you take the strength of your guy. You're also limited by your workers can only go in an appropriate space. Navies can go in any blue. Armies can go in any brown. Air forces can go anywhere. Though so that's worker placement rules for area control. You contest the top open area, 
campaign within a theater, a region. You tug of war on the board. That determines who scores these victory points. It's a race. It's a race game. It's a racetrack to hear first one to 25 wins, except you get the other player one more chance. But it's also a take that game. It's a take that game because you can bombard them. You can hit a bombardment square with your work placement. You can have a bombard unit and you, bam, bam, you hurt the guy. You make him lose a worker out of his reserve. It's constricting his ability to pull things out of his bag and do his worker placement. So it's take that, bag builder, area control, tug of war, race game with two ways to win. It's not point salad, but you can win the victory points or you can make them so he cannot move. Got it? Bag building, area control, with tug of war, Worker placement, race, with take that, and you could call it sort of an engine builder in that as you grab more tech guys and get them in your bag, you're building up your bag, you're trying to get more ability to smack them back, and your your ability to add more to your reserve gets you more guys coming out of your bag faster or a better choice of when they come out, and you can constrict while you take that. So it's, it's loosely an engine builder, but mostly a... Bag builder, area control, tug of war, with take that, and a victory point race, and it was an alternate way to win. That is Paolo Mori's Blitzkrieg, World War II, in 20 minutes or less. Now you know how to play it. <laughs> 40 minutes long, that's, that's more than you need to know, but now you really got a good insight into how this game plays, but it'll take a long time to master the game. There's a lot of you know, hmm, where do I decide to go when, given what I got, what I think the enemy has? Remember, normally you don't see the enemy. If you're playing solitaire, you're going to have to see the enemy. Uh, I'll show you how I, I deal with that in a little special way when I play. But that's Palomar's Blitzkrieg. And not only do you know how to play with some insights of what thing, you don't know all of what's in here, but we'll, we'll get to those as we play it. But you've got some insight. And if you're an experienced gamer, you got that insight of, oh, I know how to play bag builders. I know how to play area control games. I know how to, play, you know, it's just, it's the particular rules of this guy. I'll little bit to take that, uh, a little, little race, you know, there you go, folks. Palomori's Blitzkrieg, World War II in 20 minutes. <laughs> the, the game we play is obviously going to take way more than an hour when I play it the first time, because I'm going to talk through all these things like I was doing here to explain the rules, but I'll talk about the strategy and that'll take a while. We'll finish that. But then we'll do a game where I just bam, 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 play through it. Just telling you what I'm doing, not why, not hemming and hawing about it. Just a play, a play, a play. And you can see the game really quick that way. All right. So we're at 43 minutes. It's me, Henry Mike, in the Man Cave of Madness. We've done a very in-depth explanation of Paolo Mori's Blitzkrieg. Uh, normally play it in 20 minutes or less, unless you've got analysis paralysis or a total uh, newbie who needs to be, you know, helped all the way through it, that's fine. Help out the new player. Don't take advantage of your great... They'll never play again if you just, like, let him stumble and you just, you know, walk all over him. Don't do that. You also know how to play correctly. Remember, when this thing moves around on the board, here, you get to do in the tug of war, the mere act of reaching these markers on the tug of war do not score you points. Those are bonuses when you control the campaign. It's part of the area control. When an area becomes controlled and finished, whoever's in the lead scores this and any bonuses. That's the only time you score these. Okay, so I beat that into the ground. So, Meandering Mike, Man Cave of Madness, way after midnight now, and you have learned Palomar's Bush Creek. So all you good folks out there, enjoy your World War II. Take care and ciao.